Hello, everyone. I'm Don Moyer from Moyer Marine. As the Atomic Four fleet ages, we will sometimes see, even on blocks that are in otherwise good condition, where a head stud will pull out of the threads in the block. Unfortunately, this happens most frequently during the final torquing process after a complete rebuild. For this reason, we developed quite some years ago a repair kit that enables us to install a repair stud with 7 16th inch coarse threads on the lower end right through the head. Uh, this means we can install the stud without disturbing any of the other studs in the process. The kit includes one repair stud, a 7 16th inch drill bit with stop ring, a normally tapered uh, tap, and a blunt or bottoming tap, and JB Weld. These common tools are found in many of our toolboxes already, uh, including a pair of a 9 16th inch open ends, a 3 8 inch drill bit, a medium-sized adjustable wrench, a long thin screwdriver, and a pair of 10-inch vice grips. The repair stud can, of course, be installed on a disassembled engine, and so for simplicity's sake, we'll go through the process first using this uh, block that we recovered from our scrap bin. Then we'll move to install the stud on this completely assembled engine. The official pilot drill size for 7 16th inch coarse threads is just several thousands smaller than a 3 8 inch drill bit. So a 3 8 inch drill bit will work just fine for this purpose and is what we'll be using throughout this work. In fact, by the time that a stud pulls through several thread widths, uh, the remaining hole will frequently accept a 7 16th inch tap with no additional drilling required. However, it's always prudent to take a drill bit and using as a reamer to make sure the hole is ready to receive the 7 16th inch tap. Now I need to pause here for an important observation. All of the holes, the stud holes in the top of the block go into a generous, uh, generously deep water jacket, except for the ones on the uh, manifold side of the engine. These holes only extend down approximately one inch before they encounter the bottom of a water jacket. So on these holes, I always put a, a piece of tape so I can keep track of how deep the hole is going as I ream it to the proper depth. You can see the tape being reached at that point. I'll remove the debris. And that hole then is ready to receive the 7 16th inch tap. With the stud hole prepared to receive the 7 16th inch tap, we'll use the head as a guide to make sure that the tap will be going down straight. This requires setting the 7 16th inch drill bit with its stop ring, and that's then simply done by putting the stop ring such that the drill depth uh, goes to the very bottom of the head using one of the boss areas uh, and no deeper. When that's perfectly set, we'll then be sure that, that's, that that stop ring is very tight so that there'll be no chance for the drill to slip through and attack the block. With the stop ring securely set, we'll be reaming this hole now all the way through the head to the stop ring. Uh, many people express concern that we're somehow violating the head by increasing the size of this hole, but the hole is already just several thousandths 
under the 716th then. So we're reaming the hole very slightly over what it was to start with. And I, I can say I'm using the the vice grip as a, as a hand reamer because most of the time, if you're doing this on a boat, uh, changing a head on a boat, you won't have space to use a, a electric drill anyway. So we'll just continue through until the bottom of the head's reached. With the stop ring perfectly set, you can actually feel the end of the drill coming through the bottom of the head just as the stop ring is reached, uh, which is a really nice feeling. So with that, the hole is prepared now to receive the tap. So to review where we are at this point, <clears throat> we have a 7 16th inch hole through the head, and we have a 3 8 inch hole, pilot hole, into the block ready to receive our 7 16th inch tap. Notice that when the tap is, when the threaded part of the tap disappears below the top of the head is when we'll be starting to actually cut threads in the hole in the block. So here we go. The tap will barely graze the side of the hole at this point because we're still in the 16th. 7 16th inch diameter, but now we'll start to encounter the 3 8 inch hole. Notice that the tap is, is taking more effort now. <clears throat> we'll continue another inch or so, at which point we should feel the bottom of the hole as the gentle taper of this tap reaches the bottom of the 3 8 inch hole. You really don't need any type of cutting oil here as the cast iron cuts quite easily. And there it is. So we'll take the standard taper out and run the bottoming tap in just so that the threads will continue to the bottom of the hole. This is the bottoming tap that we're putting in now. It also just grazes the side of the 7 16th inch hole in the head. <clears throat> and, and there you can feel that we're encountering the top of our threaded hole. And the, the gentle taper tap just cut the threads in about maybe half the total depth. This bottoming tap will continue to deepen the threaded hole just a bit further. <clears throat> There the bottoming tap is now at the bottom of the hole. The actual tapping of the hole in the block is in many respects the easiest part of the whole operation. And now we're ready to see what our repairs, how our repair stud likes the hole that we prepared for it. Uh, notice it, it, it literally falls through the, the hole in the head and, and finds the threaded hole immediately. And it's going in finger tight, which is sort of nice. There. Now, we'll remove the head, and if it's seated properly, I'm going to show you how the top of the bottom threads is actually 
an incomplete thread so it stops and won't let you put the stud below the top of the block. <clears throat> and there you can see the very top thread of the 7 16th inch section which doesn't quite complete. When we take the stud out I'll show you a close-up of the top thread then you'll see how that how that works but it, it goes in easy until that top of that threaded section is reached and it can't go any further. That's going to be important when we install the thread in an assembled engine because you won't be able to see it at that point. I would like to show you now the subtle but very important feature that our machinist is able to do to create that stop. Uh, the uppermost thread here stops as it runs out right here instead of continuing. It's a very subtle variation in the thread as it gets to this point and it won't let you go any further. Uh, it, it'll be very important as we go to the complete engine now and install the stud where we can't see what we're doing. So while we were off camera we brought the assembled engine status up to the point we had left off with the bare block assembly, meaning that we ran the 3 8 inch drill bit through the stud hole in the block, and we also enlarged the hole in the head to 7 16th of an inch to get ready for the, uh, the tapping operation. After that, we are now ready for dry fitting the stud in the threads we just cut in the new in the assembled block. We know from prior measurements that w the stud should go down to the stop ring just at the point that we'll see about an inch and three quarters of stick up above the top of the head. We're now ready to complete the job by removing the repair stud and applying JB Weld to both the stud and to the threads in the block. To get this JB Weld to the threads in the block, I put a little uh, stop tape on my screwdriver, which, which will get me down to about an inch above the threads. And then I can know where I'm at by going a little deeper and when I get to the tape I'll be at the bottom of the threads. That should do that and now we'll put a good coat of JB on the on the coarse threads. And then we'll work them down in there. Once again, squishing it down into the to the stop thread. Which is right there. Another quick check of the total depth of just under inch and three quarters and I like to put uh, some nuts on there and give just a little bit of additional torque than I can with my fingers to make sh absolutely sure that those threads are firmly seated. but it's just a little bit above finger tight. Then I'll clean away the excess JB Weld. <clears throat> and 
and run the nut down to the bottom and put just a little bit of upward force on the threads so that I'm sure that the stud is perfectly straight and then the JB Walt can set up for final torquing uh, in, in a few hours. In case you're wondering why the repair stud is made so long, uh, the answer is that we only make one length and it has to be long enough to accommodate the longest application, which happens to be the three manifold studs. In which case, the installation steps are the same as with the block. After the JB Weld sets up and the nuts properly torqued, you can cut the stud off to whatever length you need to for your application, as we have done here. Thank you for your time and, and for your patience. We hope that this video will serve as a useful addition to the printed instructions that come with these kits. Goodbye for now and happy sailing.